Well, we got our uh, Lend-Lease receiver back from the welders. Uh, if you remember correctly, it had these holes in it that Bubba decided uh, he was going to make a hunting rifle out of this thing. So uh, what we did, we tried to do this on all, all uh, repairs, is I sent it out for a metallurgy test. And uh, you can see right here, in fact, where they did the, uh, they tested it a couple different times. They burn it, and then they uh, analyze the smoke that comes off of it, and it can, uh, it can read the, uh, the different elements and alloys that are in this uh, steel. And as you can see from here, uh, that uh, there's quite a bit of uh, different stuff in this, quite a few uh, elements and alloys. So it's no wonder that it's difficult to uh, find welding rod or do repairs that are absolutely perfect because look at how many different alloys and elements we're dealing with here. It's amazing. Uh, we spoke to the uh, welding rod manufacturer and sent him a copy of this and uh, they advised us as which rod should be used. So that was the rod that the uh, TIG welders were, uh, were given. And uh, as you can see, they went in and they welded up these five holes. Um, they did it, obviously, on the inside, too, because Bubba drilled right through. So that, that one there is going to be tricky up in the front. That's going to be a tricky one to try and, uh, try and get in there and try and get in there and do something with that. That's, not, uh, that's a pretty tight spot to work in right in there. But one way or another, we'll get in there. And I had a little bit of TIG added. There were a few uh, dings, little gouges and dings, so I had them just build it up a little bit with TIG weld. So now the next operation is to send the whole receiver out and get it annealed so that the uh, original steel will soften and the new steel will soften as well. So uh, in theory, hopefully, then once I get all this filed, I'll get all this stuff filed and get it back to uh, you know nice and level, there's not much else that this receiver needs. Like I say, just that and a few little, few little spots we did over there. But that's no big deal. Get those done. Uh, get in there. Like I say, that's going to be tricky. But So once I get those th that done, the rest of the receiver is quite nice. So uh, then I'll send it back in and get it reheat treated back up to the same uh, hardness. Most of these that we've been doing on these Garands, uh, the Rockwell's between about... Six, uh, 59 and 65. That's actually what the specs call for. So, so now we've got our metallurgy test. We get everything we need. So uh, I'm going to take this in, get it annealed, and then I'll start filing it and repairing it. And I'll keep you abreast of how I make it out. So, anyway, we're coming right along. It's one more step in the process. So, be eager to see this one all done. All right, we've got our uh, 41 grand, our uh, lend lease back from the uh, heat treaters. And we had the uh, receiver annealed. Doesn't look too pretty right now, but uh, here's those. Uh, if I remember correctly, I had those five uh, spots of TIG weld put in. You can just barely see them in this mess. But uh, and then I had a couple little tiny uh, dots of weld put in uh, in a couple other spots. A couple dings I had fixed, filled in, you know. But she looks pretty sad when she comes out of the heat treating. You know, not too pretty at all, but uh, we'll bead blast that, and that'll pretty it up. And then I can see what I've got, and then I can start filing it. We're going to start on the metal work on this one today. But I just wanted you to see it before I get it bead blasted. She looks pretty sad. got to look worse before it looks better, I guess, eh? But what a mess that makes. Just <laughs> looks terrible. Hard to believe that's going to be a pretty-looking gun again. But anyway, so I'll go ahead and get that bead blasted, and then I'll get in and I'll file. I'm only repairing the area that's damaged. So I'm only going to be doing this section here from basically from this line over to about there. So I'm just doing this just this lower flat section right in here. That's all I'm doing. There. Make that all level. Make that pretty. And then that rail, that little rail on the other side. Just that rail. Just that rail right there all the way down there. That's it. Well, there we go. Now that looks a whole lot better. So now we can really see what we're up against now. Just we're going to file those, uh, file those five uh, plug welds, and uh, try and get that nice and level. Blah blah blah. 
That part will be easy, this flat. That part will be simple. I see another little issue. I don't know if this uh, this will pick it up, if we can see it or not. But there's a bit of a gouge in the side of this receiver. You can kind of see it there. And it's not easy to see. It's not very big. Yeah, it's pretty pretty fine. Maybe it's not worth fixing. Just the slightest little bit of a scratch in the receiver that's running this way. It's right about there. It's hard to see in the silver. It's right about there. Once I sandblast it, it might not be too noticeable anymore. A couple little minor marks, one right there, but nothing of any great concern. A little, little issue right there, but once again, that's no big deal. And then the other side. These few odd spots I had built up on the other side. Once again, that's all easy. Toughest thing is going to be, by far, is going to be in here. I'll probably have to get a mill if I had to put this in the bridge port and put an end mill and run down and hopefully we can clean that all up. Might need a little hand, you know, a little hand work or something down in that corner down in there. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. Other than that, really needs nothing else. We're leaving that mark right there that we're not sure what it is, but the customer wants me to leave it. It may be some kind of a no, we just don't know if it's an inspector stamp or something or a flaw in the casting or when it was forged or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave it. So so I'm going to get, go ahead and start filing on this now that we've got it bead blast so we can really see nicely what I'm up against. So I'm going to work on this area and uh, I'll keep you posted as to how that's all coming. All right, so we've been filing for a while now. Had those five uh, plug welds. Let me get down in here uh, a little bit closer, see if I can get this camera to focus in. And uh, you can see, uh, you can faintly see where the five spots used to be, faintly. It's all nice and level now, but you can still see a slight color difference where those five drops of weld used to be. You can see them slightly. But after it's heat treated, I'm hoping... The theory is that they will all blend in and we won't be able to see them anymore. If not, we'll have to try a different approach, but that's the uh, recommended procedure by the TIG shop. That's what they wanted to try first, so we're going to try that and see what happens. I've still got the other spots to work on, and I still have to polish this, um, but you can faintly see, you know, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there and there. So hopefully the color difference won't show in the uh, park rising, but if it does, then we'll go to plan B. I've got a little more extensive plan if, if this won't work, but we're going to try the easy method first. So anyway, that's looking good there, and I'm just going to work now on, uh, I noticed we've got a little, there's a little pit, a little rust pit right up in there. I don't know if you can see it well enough, but anyway, we're going to work on that. I'm going to work on this section. I'm just going to give this a few passes with a file. Just to A, sharpen this line up a bit and see if I can get rid of that pit. So, but that's going to be it on this side. All right, so we've been working on that rail now. And uh, as you can see, she's good. Got all those spots, uh, this rail right here. So we got all the spots filed. We got it polished with hunter grit. So you can see, once again, by the reflection, she's nice and straight. No pinholes, no divots, no nothing. So it all looks good. So we're, we're uh, coming down a home stretch on this. Just got those inside spots to deal with now. So I'm going to study that for a little bit. Have a cup of coffee and figure out how I'm going to do that one. Probably going to put it in a bridge port. I'm just trying to avoid all the setup time. I'm trying to keep the cost down to the customer. So I try to... Uh, do as much hand work as I can, but sometimes you just can't. So I'll have a look at it and see what we can do. All right, we're back with our saga of the lend lease. Um, believe it or not, it's been uh, probably about three months since I made an installment on this video because we ran into massive welding problems on this job. Um, right now, if I scan it nice and slow, you can see how pretty that looks. 
It looked pretty good last time on the last bit of video, but if you know if you look close enough, you could see the circles and they just they bugged me. I mean, I'd done the best I could as far as metal finishing it, but I could just see the color difference and it bothered me. So I uh, took it back to the weld shop and they. Uh, they uh, tried uh, repairing it, and we had pinholes and pinholes and more pinholes, and we couldn't get away from the pinholes. So I ended up taking it to a second welding shop that specializes in cast steel and cast iron. It's used to dealing with porous metal, and they were able to ace this. What they did was they went in with a bridge port, and they uh, took away some of the weld from the first shop and went back in, and we used a different rod. And you can see now that the color match right off the bat is perfect got an excellent, beautiful color match in the steel alone. And there's just zero. There is no... Let me get this camera to focus in nice and close. Come on, honey. You could just see there is zero pinhole, nothing. You can't tell where those five holes were. That's what I was hoping for. That's what I want to see. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to parkerize it. I got that spot up there done that had a little pinhole. I had that welded in and I reshaped that, so that's good to go. We had that rail over there, so that's all done. That was all good to go. But last time I hadn't done the inside there, so I've got in there and I've got that inside done now. That was a terrible spot to work in. I couldn't get in there with a the bridge port. Um, it's, not a, it's not straight down in line. This, this rail here is in the way. You'd have to have a special cutter to get down in there, which I just didn't have. And I wasn't about to make a cutter. So I got in there with a Dremel and uh, some stones. and So it, it, it came out pretty good. I'm quite happy. They're quite rough in there from the factory. And by the time that's parkerized, you're not going to see nothing down in there. It's of no critical, critical dimension. The bolt just rides in there. So, But our main concern right from the beginning has been right here. That's, you know, that's what we've been trying to to save and salvage without it being noticeable that we fixed it. So I'm happy now. You know, it, it was about a three-month delay between them re-welding it and me battling them with, with them. And finally, we just had a difference of opinion, and we had to go somewhere else. So that's fine. And I'm going to buy my own TIG welder. I've had enough of this farting around. I'm a good welder. I just didn't have a TIG, but I'm going to buy one now. So that way, everything stays in-house, other than maybe some really, really tricky specialized kind of welding. There was a little bit of a tiny mark in that, but it's all machining. It's factory machining, and this customer didn't really want any of that repaired. He wants to keep it original. So I'm not going to worry about any of that that was in there. There was a slight, slight little scratch, but you're not going to see that in the parkerizing. And if we get in and try and repair that, we're going to ruin all the machining marks. So the customer said, no, we're just going to worry about, about that section, really. That's our main just going to undo what Bubba did. So, And I want to make another comment about the WD-40. This has not been parkerized. This was sandblasted. I sandblasted this receiver after uh, we got it back from the uh, welders for the last time. I sandblasted it and WD-40'd it. So it's been in WD-40 now for the last three, four days while I've been working on the areas that needed working on. So I, you know, I took away the WD-40 there. But you can see how gray how dark gray everything else is. It's just slowly almost been parkerizing itself as I've been filing and working away you know, on, on the spots that needed work. So just interesting thing about WD-40. I never knew that before, but now we know. That's one of the reasons why it protects so well. Anyway, so that's it for right now. I'm going. The next step on this particular job is to send it back to the heat treaters, and we're going to... Uh, bring this back up to about a 60 Rockwell. Between, a, between 59 and 65 is, is what's called for. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to get it heat treated, and then I'm going to uh, sandblast it and parkerize it. So hopefully, hopefully we're coming down the home stretch. Um, I'm just going to reinstall the original barrel it had on it. It had good headspace, nothing wrong with it. And I'm going to sandblast and parkerize all the other parts. There's nothing else this gun needs, just the uh, receiver, and i got to do the wood. So we're back with our uh, Lend-Lease receiver. I went ahead and had it uh, heat treated back up to uh, 62 Rockwell and then I went ahead and parkerized it. I did a manganese phosphate on it. So this is the one that we had the five holes welded shut and we can see if we look we can see the five 
I'm not 100% happy, and we've got one big one there. That was a killer, that one. And we got one, two, three, four more little ones. You can see them. They're slightly lighter gray in color. So, um, and there's also a spot on, on the rail here, over here, that for some reason it's a little bit lighter right there. You see the darkness and the light. So uh, we weren't going to repair much on this one anyway. This one was strictly the, the, those five holes. Uh, I went ahead inside. I got the inside looking looking really, really nice. The inside turned out good. I mean, it's a hard spot to get into. That's for, that's for sure. But it turned out good. I'm very happy with it. But the outside, I'm just not... You know, I'm trying to achieve better results than that. But uh, maybe, you know... We certainly went through enough effort with this thing. We had it welded about four different times, uh, and we kept running into pinholes with the weld. That was the biggest problem we had initially. Uh, we did a metallurgy test on this one, and we uh, determined the uh, alloy content, and we found a rod that was, uh, you know, pretty close, uh, as close as we could get it. This, the metal in this Garand receivers has an unusually high amount of carbon, so we were having difficulty finding any kind of a rod that, that matched that or came came close. Oh, great, I hit that with my pencil. Anyway, um, what the game plan is now, because these spots are a little bit lighter, you know, let's say I got it all metal finished, everything feels good, feels smooth, but um, uh, now, because they're a little bit lighter, I'm going to try one other thing. It, it could be that the rod had just a touch too much nickel in it, and then it's, uh, like I said, we couldn't find a rod that was, that matched. We just found something that was as close as we could come up with, but there really wasn't anything even that close. This is a you know an odd metal in these Garands, especially this era 41. So uh, we went ahead and we had it welded, and I metal finished it, and we had pinholes in the weld, and I took it back, and we did more welding, and there were more pinholes, and it went on and on until finally I just had to uh, go to a second TIG shop that specialized in porous metal. So. They uh, they went ahead and they milled out the weld the first shop did and they went back in and uh, so they got it I mean there's absolutely no pinholes now nothing it's, it's it's as good as we can get it in that respect just not happy with the color so what I'm going to do the, what we're going to attempt now is just to try and get it closer is I'm going to take this receiver and I'm going to have it annealed one more time I'm not going to do anything to it I'm just going to take it in get it annealed reheat treated. And I'm going to repartherize it. That's it. No file work, no polishing, no nothing. Because what will happen lots of times is a second annealing and a second heat treating will help blend in the new metal even better. I see a slight, even a slight little bit of discoloration right there, and I don't know what, why that should be there. But one more annealing and heat treating, and we're going to see what it looks like. We don't really want to go to the trouble of digging these back out and rewelding them yet again. Um, just because we can match the nickel doesn't mean, mean that the color match is going to be right. You know, there's so many variables in this stuff that we may have to live with 95%. I mean, that's a damn sight better than it was with five holes drilled in it. But uh, it's still not what I'm trying to achieve. It's not what Vulcan Gunnery Finishing is trying to achieve. So I'm trying to get a perfect, perfect finish, if at all possible. All right, so I got the barrel installed on this uh, Lendlease Grand. And... Uh, We've got it in the sandblast cabinet. We've all been here before. We've got all our parts blasted. Everything's ready to go. Uh, we saw what the receiver looked like uh, when it was polished, but uh, now let's just have a look at it that's been sandblasted. I want to see how those... You can just see kind of very faint ghost of where those five spots used to be. Look really carefully. You can see them. So... Um, but we'll see what she looks like when she's parked. I'm sure when it's park rise, it's going to be beautiful. But that's what we've all been waiting for, to see what that's going to look like. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get everything parked today. And uh, there's the rest of the parts all blasted. Everything's nice and clean, good to go. So, we're going to get this one done today. And uh, a little bit later, I'll show you what everything looks like. And we'll see if those spots have disappeared. All right. All right, so we're starting to put our strings of uh, parts for our lend lease into the uh, park rising. I've just got a uh, got to get a uh, my wrench tank going. Let's get these parts in the wrench tank. Pre rinse them, get all the dust and stuff off of them. Just gonna give a little more water here. 
So we'll get all of, we'll get a few strings of parts going, and we'll uh, get some part rising done. So we get all our parts uh, rinsing, rinsing all the dust and everything off. This is the first batch of parts for this lend lease. This is enough parts for right now. So it's going to put her in the park rising and uh, just watch her fizz up. It's about time we got this one done. This one's been hanging around for too long. We had so many technical problems on this job, it wasn't even funny. So, but now we're, uh, we're on track. Eager to see what this is going to look like um, after it's parked. I'm sure she's going to look just fine. But we'll uh, we'll find out. Find out in a second. So get this going. And okay. Make sure none of our parts are touching. Keep them away from the walls of the tank. Keep them off the bottom. Keep them from touching each other. Looking good. Beautiful. Beautiful. None of these parts had any issues, so these are all going to be fine. These will all come out just fine. It's the receiver that we're that we're after. Want to see how nice those five holes come out? So anyway, we'll let these cook for about 15 minutes, and. Uh, I'll get back to you and we'll uh, see what they look like. I'll do another batch of parts and uh, we'll have everything done here shortly. So we've got our barreled receiver for our lend -Lease Grand in the rinse tank and we're uh, just getting ready to uh, drop it in the park rising and we're going to see just how nice those five holes now get in there a little bit you can know, see how nice that looks you can't can't tell from from here that it ever had any any holes in it. But we're going to see in about 15 minutes what it really looks like. Yeah, there she goes, just a fizzing away. So, like I say, in about uh, 15 minutes, we'll be able to see just how how righteous we made Bubba's work look. I hated to undo all that craftsmanship that Bubba did, but, you know, just the way I am. Always ruining history, that's me. So, anyway, we'll see in a few minutes. All right, we're back with our 1941 Garand uh, that we are pretty sure it's a Lend-Lease. Uh, we've been working on this project for several months now, a few months, so we've had many problems trying to get a perfect color match on the weld material to fill in those five holes that Bubba made in the side of the receiver. Um, all the other parts have been done for a while. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick rundown on some of them. Um, we added a uh, grooved handguard clip uh, a couple of months ago. The customer supplied me with one of those, so that was missing from the original, and it should have had one uh, originally. So. Now we're getting a little closer to how it should look. The uh, gas tube, the original gas tube, had a hacksaw cut right down the center of it, right down here. So we uh, got rid of that one and replaced it with a nice, uh, unissued, the proper style with the early base and everything. So we're going to have the right parts on it. The customer's very picky. He really wants this to look nice, and we've been striving hard to make it look nice. But metallurgy and things are getting in our way a little bit. I'll show you that in a second. We've got the nice early early um, Allen screw with the shoulder milled away a bit and uh, I was able to locate an original little plastic cap for them that will snap in there once we're all done so so we're trying to make it look as proper as we possibly can that's why I've been working so hard on uh, that receiver and it's been back to the welders and we've tried different rods and we've annealed it and we've heat treated it and We've never had to go through this with 45s. The steel used in 45s is completely different than the steel used in Garands. And uh, the welders, first, the first weld shop, very renowned weld shop, very competent, best in the, t in the city, uh, just had too many problems with the porous metal in these receivers. So 
finally after maybe almost half a dozen attempts and me metal finishing it and uh, finding pinholes and more pinholes and so finally I went to another welder. We got the pinhole problem solved but now we've been fighting a color match issue. I also just wanted to show you while I'm here if you remember correctly that rear aperture had been V'd by Bubba. Well we're assuming it was Bubba, probably the same guy that drilled the five holes in the receiver. So uh, we replaced that with a nice, you know, undamaged one. So, so like I say, everything is parked, everything looks beautiful, there's no issues. You know, this was a nice gun, nice trigger guard, no pitting, no nothing. It was, it was a beautiful gun, really worth putting some time and effort into. Just how nice that is, just no damage at all. Real low mileage gun, beautiful bore and everything. Now I want to show you the receiver. If you remember correctly, this thing had five holes drilled in the, uh, in the left side of it. And I've worked diligently for the last five or six months, re-metal finishing it, having it re-welded, heat treating it, annealing it. So now we've come down to this. Now that's, that's not bad considering, you know, it had five holes drilled through the side of it. All right, so as I was saying, we've done everything humanly possible. I'm just going to wipe that oil off there and get this looking absolute best for you. I mean it's it's considering what it's been through it's quite a quite a nice repair but I was hoping for something a little bit better. I mean we're getting awful close awful close but you can still tell. I mean the rest of the receiver is beautiful no other issues nothing just those five holes just a little bit discouraging tried so hard on trying to make it perfect. I played with the color. I lightened the color on the parkerizing. I, uh, the last time I did this receiver, I uh, ran it at a, lo a, a lower temperature. I ran it at about 180 as opposed to I normally run my parkerizing around 200, 205. And it comes out nice and dark, and I like it, and everybody likes it, but those spots were much more visible in the darker parkerizing. They don't seem to be taking the parkerizing like the rest of the receiver. Even though we had a metallurgy test done and we found what was supposed to be about the closest rod to that, you know, chemical makeup of the original steel of this 41 receiver. But still, even after all that and all the annealing and everything, we're still, like I say, it's not bad, but it's there. We uh, worked on uh, changing the uh, temperature of the park rising a little bit. We lowered the temperature of the park rising just a bit. It made the park rising a touch lighter. And you can see now that you virtually can't even see those five spots or five welds done in here because of the uh, holes drilled in the side from Bubba. We also did a little bit of work uh, on that rail there. We fixed a few little minor spots on that rail, so that all looks good now. But uh, our biggest concern, right, you know, right from the beginning, has been, has been that, uh, that receiver right there with those five uh, holes drilled through it. I just want to have a really good, if you can get you real close right up in there, you can see that it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, if, you, if we go at a bit of an angle, ever so slight, you can just almost see, you can see a slight ghost of where those five holes used to be. You know, I can almost see one there, maybe there. Yeah. Pretty hard to see. Pretty hard to see. We've done everything humanly possible. We've annealed it, heat treated it, tried different weld compounds. Yeah, you know, just in the right you know, in the right angle, you can see a little bit of ghosting near those five five holes. You can see that just ever so slightly. But boy, that's that is awful close. You know, from right on, you can't see them at all. From right on, they're beautiful. So we're finally done. We've we've reached the point where we're happy. I'm happy. Customers happy. Like I say, if you look, you know, there's still a little. You can still slightly see it, but boy, that's, that's not bad, considering what we've been through. So we're calling it good enough. That's the end of the line for this one. 
I've just got to uh, reassemble it. I'm just going to, uh, I've got all the wood finished for it now. So I'm just going to uh, put this all back together. All the other parts are completed. So can't wait to get this one done. We've had this one for quite a while, and I think quite a few people have been watching the videos. So now I can complete the videos and complete the weapon and get it back to the customer. So this has been an interesting project, frustrating at times, but uh, I knew we'd get it eventually, just a matter of finding the right weld shop and the right circumstances, but we're getting it all together now. All right, so we've got it all together. Uh, this is our 41 land lease. Finally got it finished. Got the wood all boiled. This is uh, Boyd's reproduction of wood. And the uh, gun's been reparkerized. We're going to flip it over in a minute and see how it all looks with those five spots that were welded. But I just wanted to uh, go over this a little bit now that it's fully assembled and finished. Uh, if you remember correctly, we uh, changed the uh, my pointer here. We changed the uh, gas tube. This is a different gas tube because the original one had a hacksaw cut right down the middle there. So we uh, replaced it with this with this gas tube, which is in nice shape. Uh, everything else, pretty much, other than the one handguard clip we'll get to is original. This one, all this stuff was original. It was all in nice shape. There was nothing pitted. Um, this handguard clip. Had, was missing when we got the uh, when we got the gun, so we uh, located a uh, proper grooved handguard clip and installed that. As I say, everything else was parkerized. Everything else was in good shape. We changed the uh, rear aperture that had been uh, fiddled with. We uh, put a reproduction butt plate on, which uh, that turned out very nice. Let's have a look at that. So. Nothing wrong with that. A nice Parker Lubrite once again. So, now I want to see the side that we had all the work done on. See how we did. You can see that that's extremely nice. You can still see the evidence. Let me block a little bit of this light. You can see slight evidence of the five welds. They're slightly there, but the uh, customer has decided that that's as far as we're going to go on this one. We had attempted, we'd welded that several times using different rod. Um, based on metallurgy tests that we had done, you know, early, uh, but we just still couldn't quite 100% match it. We annealed it, we heat treated it, we did everything humanly possible, but they are still slightly noticeable. I mean, major improvement over five holes that were there, and if you look at it right on the money, you really can't even see them, but if you put a, go at a bit of an angle, they do show up slightly, but way better than five holes. So the rest of it is nice. This is that wood that was boiled. You can see just how nice. I'm going to go nice and slow and give you a chance to see that wood. I, uh, I love that wood when, when it gets boiled and it just opens up. You can see that grain just looks beautiful. I mean, there's no way you'd guess that this was a stock that was just made. I mean, it just looks so good. Look at that grain. Block a little of that light for you. But that grain is just tremendous. It's beautiful. So, uh, and I stain it. Uh, my own color. I pick a, I mix my own color of stain just to try and mimic older wood. You can see all the bands were nice. Um, we just changed that gas tube. It's the only thing we had to do. Just going to flip it up. Have a look at the top of that wood. I just like that grain so much. That's it. We block the wood straight. It's got a few little waves in it when you get it. Nothing major, but I like it to be nice and straight. So there's that clip again. So there's that symbol that we don't know exactly what that symbol means yet. But uh, we were asked by the customer to uh, leave it intact. So that's what we did. Don't know what it is. 
the bolt, everything. It's Parka Lubrite once again, so you get a beautiful, even, nice, even uh, color. There's our. Uh, we didn't have to do any filing or repairing back here, so the nomenclature is still nice and deep and crisp. No pitting whatsoever. There's that beautiful wood again. So let's have a look on this side here. Just nice. We, I think we'll have a happy customer on our hands here. Well, let's look at that grain. That grain is just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. So, a little bit of tongue oil. I, I put two, uh, two coats of tongue oil on there. And uh, that's about all it really needs. Just wipe a little oil. Get that off right there. show you how even and smooth that Parker Lubrite is for color and consistency. So, once again, that old wood of mine. Let's put that over. So the trigger housing. Everything is nice. Trigger guard. Just uh, once again, wipe a little bit of, a bit of oil or something on there. There we go. That's better. Yeah, it's much better. There we go. There you can see just how nice and even. The parts were in beautiful shape. There was no pitting. It's got the early, uh, early uh, drying numbers on it. Yeah. Trusty old camera. It doesn't want to focus as usual, but anyway. The nice even parkerizing. So that's about it for this one. Like I said, it's been a long road. Oh, I want to show you the inside of the receiver too. Yeah, so the inside, uh, you can't see any evidence of it ever being welded. The color match inside is really good. And I uh, metal finished it all. You know, it's a little rough in there right from the factory anyway. So that was, uh, you know, made the job a little bit easier. I mean, getting in there was not easy, but at least I was able to finish it nice enough that we can't tell it ever had any damage. So so overall, like I say, uh, it was a, you know, a challenging project. Um, most people, I'm sure, wouldn't even assume it could turn out as nice as this one did. Um, it's not 100%, but we got to give it a, a good solid, uh, probably 95%, considering uh, you know, considering what, it's, what it was through, I think it looks pretty pretty good. I like the finished product. So, anyway, so that's another one that's uh, done. Uh, glad you enjoyed it. Glad you all followed along. I, uh, I've talked to the customer, and he's undecided whether or not we're going to put the red band on it at this point. And also, I still have to put a, uh, a little, uh, there's a little plug that goes in here, and I have one. I bought a brand new one. I found a new one for him. So I have to install that yet, but uh, he, uh, he hasn't made up his mind yet whether or not he wants that installed and whether he wants the red band painted somewhere on this forearm or maybe here, I'm not sure. But because remember, when I got this, it had no, uh, no original wood. In fact, when he got it, it had no original wood. So we don't know uh, where the wood is with the red band. But uh, anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But overall, it's all done. It turned out nice. I think everybody enjoyed it, and he's got another nice piece for his collection.